God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. So I wanted to make this one last video since we've been talking about repentance and forgiveness and restoration. And there's two points that I want to make. So first off, to an outside world that isn't following Christ, that doesn't know who God is, that doesn't read the scriptures, if you have an opportunity, two believers, two of you, to model biblical repentance and forgiveness and restoration and show that to people who are not believers, can you imagine the impact that would have for the kingdom when this non-believing person sees two people engage and interact biblically and how it's supposed to be done, where the person stops doing what they're doing, they change their behavior, they ask for forgiveness and forgiveness is granted, and then they make amends to restore the relationship. Imagine what that looks like to a non-believing world, seeing something like that modeled and how impactful and pivotal that could be to change the way some people live in their lives. Secondarily, you could have a believer who really doesn't want to forgive you and you can't make them, can you? So what happens if they won't forgive? So Colossians 3 verse 13 says this, bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. So unfortunately, people who are in the church, brothers and sisters, they don't necessarily model that. And maybe the, the trauma, the pain was so difficult, they can't. They're required to. I don't think it's so much that they can't, I think it's that they won't. So what happens when they won't forgive you? So you have repented, you've changed, you've stopped doing what you've done, you've asked for forgiveness and they won't grant it. So you've asked, can, how can I restore this? And you can do those things that they have asked you to do, but it may not mean that they will ever forgive you. And that is on them. That is not on you because you cannot control what somebody else will do or what they don't do. And you can ask, but that doesn't mean that they will grant it. And then they are the ones who are being disobedient. So if somebody has been unfaithful to their spouse, etc., you know, how do you, how do you restore that? Well, you have to allow them access to your email, to your phone, etc. You have to be where you say you will be, be where you say you will be when you say you will be there. You have to be with the people that you say that you will be that be with, and you have to model to them and show them that you can be trustworthy. And after you've done all that you can, if you've repented, you've asked for forgiveness, you've done what you can to restore, you cannot control if they will not forgive you. And they are in disobedience because we need to forgive. So there's always an opportunity for repentance. There's always an opportunity for forgiveness. There's always an opportunity for restoration. And we looked at those examples with Jacob and Esau and bowing down, etc. We looked at that. We looked at David building an altar where he said, this has to cost me something. You know, we looked at Ezra tearing his clothes, pulling his hair out of his head and his beard. And we saw like the story of the prodigal son in the book of Luke, where he humbled himself, he repented. We saw how Saul, who became Paul, how he changed and did something different. And remember that in Galatians 6, 1, it says this, my friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. And then lastly, I want to share this passage here from 1 Peter because um, I think it's just one more thing that we, you know, that we want to look at as a body of believers. And it says this, this is 1 Peter 5 and we are in verse 10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. So there's always an opportunity for repentance, for forgiveness, and for restoration. Armor up, we ride at dawn. May God bless you as always. Have a great day.